hello in this session we are going to understand the issues regarding taliban we will try to understand taliban in such a way that we will see how taliban started to rise the ruling of taliban from 1996 to 2001 the fall of taliban and the right now recognition of taliban what are the main objectives of this session we will try to understand the political instability the origin of political instability in afghanistan how cold war influenced afghanistan rise of mujahideen and its islamic state of afghanistan ruling warlords atrocities ideologies influenced the talibs then we will try to understand what is kirka sharif and how talibans conducted their ruling in afghanistan under the name of islamic emirates of afghanistan how they associate with al qaeda what is operation enduring freedom and we will also try to see how the present taliban how the taliban regained its power with some negotiations with the global countries and we will also try to understand what are the security challenges with taliban and its alliance not only for the regional at the regional level we will also see at the global level okay so these are the videos which are circulating in and around the national international media regarding th that is talibans enjoying their holidays enjoying their uh, freedom okay and um, enjoying all the modern uh, recreational spots how they are moving here and there in uh, afghanistan so now let us try to understand the background story okay so how these talibans raised originated and also uh, conducted rule and everything we'll see now to understand that we should go back to the history of taliban in that this man muhammad jahir shah muhammad jahir shah and he is the last king of the mighty durrani empire try to understand here this durrani empire was established by ahmad shah abdali ahmad shah abdali who associated with a famous battle i hope you remember third battle of third battle of panipat okay in the year 1761 he that is this durrani empire dynasty established by ahmad shah abdali now try to understand that and this muhammad jahir shah's last king of this empire when he is conducting when he is in the helm of affairs when he is ruling the afghanistan ruling afghanistan at that time he faced a lot of opposition okay because he never uh, tries to give good governance he never tries to follow any rules and regulations he used to follow he has to he has faced a lot of corruption allegations nepotism everything is there and he is to suppress opposition and opposition rise to a certain level that one day opposition a team led by muhammad dawood khan conducted a massive coup and he captured the power and he captured the power and he established ruling in afghanistan this muhammad dawood khan has some socialist background but slowly and gradually he started to maintain some relations with even usc also even that created a lot of conflict okay so now we will see what happened what what happened later so later instability continues to persist conflict started to rise different factions between different factions corruption still it is there and unemployment still it is there and inflation also started to rise in and around afghanistan and that at that point at that point even we witnessed cold war 2 okay you know very well that cold war is a geopolitical tensions or ideological tension between usa and ussr happened between 1947 to 1991 okay during that time cold war influenced even afghanistan also okay afghanistan became a, a proxy war spot for this cold war 
how when Muhammad Dawood Khan, when Dawood Khan conducting, uh, uh, when Muhammad, uh, sorry, Dawood Khan, when he is in the helm of affairs, when he is uh, ruling Afghanistan, initially he maintained some stand towards the socialism, but slowly and gradually he uh, raised relations with uh, USA. So that created a problem, and uh, local socialist party, PDPA government, uh, they conducted a coup with the support of USSR in the name of Saw Revolution. In the name of Saw Revolution. So try to understand this. What is this Saw is about? Okay. So Saw is the meaning. Is the second. The meaning is second month. It is a second month. Second month in Persian calendar. Okay. If you convert for our calendar, it is April month. That's the reason it is called as April coup or April Revolution also. And this was conducted in there 1978 and 79. And finally, USSR with the support of USSR with the support of USSR, they established power. And as you know very well that in Cold War politics, USA and USSR used to maintain a tough fight in the, in the proxies, the proxies faction. So here also what happened, Operation Cyclone was launched by USA and they started to train a group called as Mujahideen, which is a group of seven parties seven different parties from USA sorry from um, Iran there is one party from Saudi Arabia there is one party and local Afghanistan there is some party so like that, there are seven parties formed Mujahideen and they started to counter they started to counter they started to counter PDPA government okay so we got a clarity now that is Mujahideen supported by USA PDPA, the ruling party supported by USSR and they used to fight a lot. Okay, in the Cold War, in the Cold War politics, the proxy war was conducted between PDPA and Mujahideen and this was rising. But still, unemployment is rising, inflation is rising, no human rights, people are suffering a lot. At this time also, they continues to fight a lot. But now things changed, things changed a lot within the USSR. You see, USSR, USSR established in 1922 USSR established in 1922 and it is a group of republics come second there are 15 republics here and uh, they these republics started to started to demand freedom liberty and they also demanding economic reforms more technology more productivity and uh, these reforms these conflicts within the republic started to rise tensions in the ussr central party in russia and uh, russia i mean ussr left ussr left afghanistan and uh, that uh, created a power vacuum and when ussr left uh, immediately immediately what happened uh, the pdpa government uh, the, lost the majority the pdpa government lost the majority and uh, it uh, it faced a lot of tensions and the pdpa government uh, when it lost the majority it unable to it unable to maintain maintain its power and within the short time we witnessed uh, we witnessed the arrival of a new group uh, that is the opposition mujahideen formed a formed government under the peshawar records 1992 and this mujahideen and this Mujahideen started and this Mujahideen started a new Afghanistan called as Islamic a new Mujahideen started Islamic states of Afghanistan okay and uh, during that time warlords raised these warlords are economically strong maintain private army and they used to conduct lot of atrocities against innocent women against common man they used to occupy different places and uh, no one able to counter these warlords on other side people still facing lot of difficulties in socio-economic conditions are deteriorated in afghanistan under the islamic state of afghanistan which is ruled by mujahideen at the same time mujahideen i told you already seven different parties and they used to fight each other for different reasons and this lead to this lead to lot of instability political turmoil situation chaotic situ chaotic situation confusing situation in and around the afghanistan at this time someone has to come someone has to come to uh, to reduce this pain someone has to come to support them so at that time the religious the rel the role of religion we can see here religion played an important role for example, in case of in case of talibs, 
okay that is talib is nothing but students students in pashto language in case of talibs it's a religion which played a important role because it is a, it is a, the dio bandi thought it is the dio bandi thought which inspired talibs a lot you know very well that dio bandi is a place dio bandi is a place in uttar pradesh in uttar pradesh and this thought is a revival thought revivalist thought revival of islam revival of purest islam revival of islam which was mentioned by prophet muhammad okay they used to give importance to shariat shariat uh, the law which is uh, which is uh, based on the sunnas the rules and regulations of islamic culture and this influenced talibs a lot and diobandi movement diobandi thought influenced talibs a lot even this influenced uh, even um, indian indian history also in, within the indian history also we, we saw we witnessed the role of uh, diobandi thought uh, against the britishers in uh, india okay and uh, some historians believe that uh, diobandi inspired uh, uh, some muslims during 1857 revolt also okay then when these talibs are inspired all these people motivated to fight against these atrocities uh, and they went to kandahar they went to kandahar and where in kandahar there is one prestigious temple there is one prestigious temple uh, prestigious temple and in which you will see a shrine of uh, clack shrine of clack which is uh, where you will you will see the relics of prophet muhammad that is as per islamic tradition they believe that uh, prophet muhammad uh, uh, stayed one night in uh, kandahar in this uh, shrine of uh, clock uh, which is uh, a kirka sharif in that uh, kirka sharif one man gave address to the talibs students and that is this man muhammad amar played a significant role in the establishment of talibans uh, ruling in uh, afghanistan okay so this muhammad omar uh, called himself as a leader and uh, he proclaimed that he will he will establish a islamic rule under the name of uh, islamic emirates of afghanistan 1996 so he started to rule proclaim the government uh, started to rule in and around the afghanistan under this name islamic emirates of afghanistan okay so that lead to that led to establishment of a new government there in the initial days in the initial days talibans used to fight against corruption used to fight against brutal uh, brutality of officers they used to fight against they used to fight against mujahideen they used to fight against mujahideen okay with this they enhanced with this they they got good will they got good will from afghan people wherever they go they used to fight against warlords who are warlords just we discussed a couple of minutes back they are the people who committed atrocities against common man and these warlords brutally suppressed by talibs okay so whenever it is possible they raised their they raised their voice and uh, they suppressed the warlords with that they gained some popularity acceptance by the local people so this pashtun communities this pashtun people talibs got acceptance from few sections of the afghan people and then they became popular they became popular like wherever it is problem is there they used to go anada jeevula bogade kosam surudila ne idrista like they used to go they used to go and they used to rise and that lead to and that lead to a new kind of politics here then later they started to they started to give importance to sharia which is sunni uh, sun, uh, sunnah and uh, then they used to focus on hanifi school which is also a revivalist kind of movement which is also which is also focus on which is also focused on which is also focused on uh, revivalist revivalist kind and uh, this diobandi and hanifi school purely focusing on orthodox islamic practices like that so with that uh, they started to establish this uh, sharia based uh, new government uh, under the name of islamic emirates of afghanistan how they rule first and foremost thing try to understand why why because if you understand how they ruled previously you can tell what will happen whether they will change or not let us see now 
the first and foremost learning is the band entertainment and recreation activities what do you mean by that that is no cinema theaters no DJ festivals no 31st night celebrations no birthday parties okay no rallies okay no gunna gunna mawadi and no other DJ songs completely banned completely banned and that lead to that lead to first blow to people uh, liberties that is people used to have fun days to move here and there they used to celebrate everything is banned okay even televisions dth okay games recreational activities everything was banned and even they used to oppose uh, satellite dishes also then intolerance they followed policy of intolerance what do you mean by that they started to hate uh, other religions for example, the best one is Bamiyan Blast, the Buddhist statue in the 5th and 6th century uh, placed in uh, Afghanistan, it was blasted. Then they committed a, a massive genocide against Shia Hazras. Shia Hazras, a uh, lot of people, thousands of people uh, died because these people are mostly Shias and Talibs are Sunnis and they used to fight a lot with Shias and they committed genocide. Then. The most important one is brutal repression of women's rights. Women who used to have their own freedom, who used to educate, who, who, who used to go for employment, they started to suffer under Taliban rule. They started to suffer under Taliban rule, that is, their rights were completely suppressed. Forced marriages, as per Amnesty International, almost 70% marriages under the Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan, under the rule of Taliban, were forced marriages less than 18 years less than 16 years they used to go for forced marriages so taliban did all these things even the prohibited employment they prohibited uh, public transport isolation uh, complete isolation is there depression raised okay and uh, later uh, they they said uh, if they want to appear in public places they should have burqa okay burqa should be must okay that's the reason you see the sale of burqas rise after uh, Taliban climbing power in uh, Afghanistan okay then they followed scratched earth policy they followed this uh, scratched earth policy what is this scratched earth policy what is the, what, what this scratched earth policy we should understand okay see um, they used to follow like this if they believe that if they believe that if they believe that if anything if they believe that if anything which is going to useful for if anything is going to useful for useful for enemy they used to destroy it so in scratch death policy they will destroy anything any asset which may be useful to enemy they used to burn it they used to burn it so here i want to convey that they used to burn sorry they used to burn sorry yeah they used to burn uh, fields and they used to burn the assets or lands which may be useful to enemies they used to burn houses and villages if they consider that they, these people are those people going to use are going to help any enemies they used to burn them a lot okay so they used to follow this crotch death policy okay so these things happen during the during this uh, afghan rule and uh, apart from that uh, women used to get public punishment <laughs> public punishment if they committed any wrong if they came out uh, without the help of uh, without the help of male in the family they used to get uh, open punishment public places that is the situation okay so these are the main important uh, uh, features in the islamic emirates of afghanistan ruling a uh, taliban rule okay so now we will try to understand uh, now we will try to understand the next aspect uh, that is how they started negotiations or how they became popular before that they will understand how they became popular okay so islamic emirates of afghanistan not at all accepted by anyone only few countries used to maintain uh, better relations like pakistan and uh, even united arab emirates uh, maintain some relations with uh, taliban however they got international recognition after associating with this man okay so this man this man started a, uh, a group called as this man started a group you know very well that is called as al qaeda okay so when he started al qaeda in the year 1988 the meaning of al qaeda is the base or foundation and this man used to fight against 
against western culture and even modern islamic culture so he used to follow extreme form of um, religion i mean he extreme form of uh, uh, violence and he want to he want to counter western influence around the islamic country so that he is the prime reason against this 9 by 11 attack and we also believed that uh, this was uh, that is it was proved that it was led by al qaeda and uh, Al Qaeda maintained close ties with uh, uh, Taliban's, and even Al Qaeda leaders mostly stayed in that uh, Taliban regions also. Remember this: this man associated with the Mujahideen, the seven parties which we discussed uh, previously, the seven parties, and he is one of the member in Mujahideen. Later, um, he uh, went to have uh, his own team, okay, Al Qaeda. And now we will try to understand what happened later. So when uh, USA came to understand that. Uh, uh, the prime reason for the 9 billion uh, uh, attack is Al Qaeda, and they strongly believed that this Al Qaeda, Al -Qaeda leaders, Al Qaeda leaders, uh, staying in, residing in, working from, operating in, uh, operating from Afghanistan, they targeted Afghanistan. Okay, and you can see the statement uh, which is filled with uh, full of angry. That is whether we bring our enemies to justice or bring justice to our enemies, justice will be done. So justice will be done. So how this justice will be done? They launch an operation called as Operation Enduring Freedom, and this operation and this Operation Enduring Freedom created a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, created a lot of impact in the Afghanistan politics lot of impact so these Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan now started to face operation enduring freedom with the support of NATO forces North Atlantic Treaty Organization 1948 and Brussels headquarters Brussels and remember that uh, uh, this will follow collective defense that is one member in that NATO attacked by anyone all will return give all will give a return gift so here things also the same thing happened when USA was uh, attacked by Taliban, attacked by Al-Qaeda, sorry, attacked by Al-Qaeda, so they gave a written gift and uh, all these uh, NATO forces and USA forces and some UK forces entered into Afghanistan and that started to lead a new war, okay, so that lead to create a lot of uh, tensions and uh, this was uh, led from 2001 to 2014, continues to have a battle and uh, in the initial days itself, uh, USA uh, dethroned uh, Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan, and it was replaced by, and it is replaced by Islamic, and it is replaced by, by Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, and then still Taliban continues to fight. Later, um, the top leader of uh, Al Qaeda, Osama bin Laden, was died. Osama bin Laden was died, and that leads to create, uh, that leads to create uh, some kind of negotiations channel okay and even taliban opened their office in 2013 in doha in qatar and they started to negotiate with usa okay not only usa they also started negotiations with uh, some other countries even some other groups some other important groups also played some important role some important role in uh, in uh, establishment of peace in afghanistan so we will see now so which groups actively participated here the first one is heart of asia istanbul process and a group of 15 countries group of 15 countries active active from uh, activate active from 2011 so from they active from 2011 onwards they used to continue they continue to discuss a peace process in afghanistan how peace process will come and everything and then uh, the, the other most important uh, organization is a six plus two plus one group okay so six countries the countries which are sharing boundaries those so that is china pakistan iran are three the remaining three are tajikistan turkmenistan tajikistan turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. and these countries apart from these two countries are usa and russia and then afghanistan so this group also uh, played an important role in uh, important role in in maintaining in maintaining negotiations uh, with the afghanistan and even involved uh, some kind of peace talks with taliban and the most important one the next most important one is uh, moscow format try to understand here active from 2017 and it started delegations with taliban okay after moscow format even they also had troika 
started in 2019 and it involves three countries USA Russia and Afghanistan now few weeks back they want to update Torika with uh, Turkey and Qatar so then the most important one the most important one and in fact the the very significant one the significant one is the Doha Accords okay very significant because this Doha Accords this Doha Accords gave ultimate opportunity to Taliban's to capture power okay why I tell ultimate opportunity understand this in Doha Accord in 2020 USA agreed USA agreed for withdrawal and they agreed to bring peace in Afghanistan how USA withdrawal based on one assurance Taliban gave one assurance that they will prevent other factions other terrorist groups to use Afghanistan soil against other countries that is they don't want to allow any terrorist group any terrorist organization against any other country they use the soil for the peace they will establish rights they will establish, establish a, a good governance like that they gave assurance based on that assurance they accepted the high accord and even Trump uh, announced withdrawal of uh, withdrawal from um, Afghanistan and that was fulfill, fulfilled by Joe Biden sir so finally what happened what happened simple that is Afghanistan Afghanistan now started to suffer okay so that is Afghanistan started to suffer and we are witnessing a lot of situations Afghanistan when Taliban started to attack Taliban's used uh, modern weapons against the civilians killing a lot of innocent people climbing uh, killing opposition people and even people don't want to stay in Afghanistan live in Afghanistan with some fear and they are leaving away from leaving away from uh, from Afghanistan okay then this is right now the exact picture okay the Taliban uh, control is expanding the Taliban footprint is expanding and almost uh, it is expanding to different territories almost as per the 20, uh, August 12th uh, I'm, I'm telling you so still it is expanding okay and then what are the security threats what are the different security th threats that is we will face not only in the sense regional not only India but regional levels what are the security threats see Taliban is not uh, a single entity Taliban has a lot of factions a lot of affiliations those affiliations will create a lot of problem because Doha Accord completely failed to get assurance regarding these affiliations the first and foremost one is Hakani network which is um, very significant so Hakani network uh, a very significant uh, it even uh, it even uh, it even blasted Indian embassies, created some blast near Indian embassies. So this was not mentioned in any agreement. Then Al Qaeda, as per UN report, Al Qaeda still active. It is in dormant stage right now. Had some affiliations with uh, Taliban even till today also. Then Tehrik I Taliban Pakistan. In 2014, they are the prime suspect and prime reason for the blast an army school which killed almost 140 children okay still it is associated with Taliban okay then Islamic movement of Uzbekistan created a lot of conflicts and terrorist uh, terrorist camps and uh, creating some kind of security challenge to Uzbekistan a lot East Turkmenistan Islamic movement associated with uh, Uyghur Muslims and you know very well that these Uyghur Muslims are in Xinjiang province and you should remember this place because for films these names are quite important so East Turkmenistan Islamic movement uh, affiliated with the Uyghur Muslims and creating a lot of tensions in and around the borders of China then the next is Islamic Jihad Union active in Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan and then we also have Islamic State of Khorasan province Afghanistan which is a faction of faction of ISIS okay even they blasted uh, uh, some important uh, city uh, they created some blast in some important cities of Afghanistan okay quite important even because uh, this is a highly dangerous organization which is expanding silently but uh, 
Taliban won't, uh, didn't, take, till now, didn't take any action against these uh, forces. Okay, and uh, now, now there is one more point that, one more point that experts believe that Pakistan will use the situation. According to Ambassador Dilip Sinha, according to his analysis, he believes that now Pakistan is under pressure. It is Pakistan considered with a terror attack. It is having some terror attack. Okay, wherever uh, you see people will blame Pakistan for terrorist activities. It is considered to be motherland of terrorism also. Now that tag should be removed. How it will be removed? It will be removed by shifting some terror camps to some other place. Now it may use Taliban. So Taliban maybe now uh, maybe now uh, now accept some terrorist groups some terrorist groups from pakistan and ship to uh, taliban or afghanistan and that may give some relief in fatf because you know very well that financial action task force established in 1989 1989 which will uh, impose some restrictions you know gray list black list is there and uh, countries has to maintain some rules and regulations in money laundering prevention of money laundering and prevention of terrorist financing if they are not accepting the people will uh, this will impose a lot of sanctions so that will that under that pressure they may shift terrorist camps also and next one is talibans associated with a lot of drug trade lot of drugs and arms trade particularly muhammad yaqub the son of muhammad omar he is maintaining this drug trade a lot okay so according to UNDOC that is United Nation drug and official uh, con uh, crimes control uh, drug office and uh, crimes control they gave one report that Taliban associated with the drug trade and which amounts to few billion rupees also and even they associated with some illegal arms weapon also so this is an interesting discussion so these security challenges not only impact India it will also impact the region at the region level so now we have to maintain vigilant we have to be vigilant near the borders okay some terrorist attacks uh, some cross-border terrorism issues may arise or even now um, and now the influx of refugees will also rise so all these things lot of security challenges now we have to maintain uh, so due diligence towards this issue okay so with this we finished the first uh, discussion uh, whatever happened it's the uh, afghan citizens lives is matter that's why the india is to focus afghan led afghan owned afghan controlled uh, mechanism for peace process for peace resolution for issue resolution but that was not maintained uh, from the beginning to till now so in the next uh, discussion we will see how india how india actively engaging in afghanistan what india's role and now what is India's uh, future path? We will see and everything in the next discussion, uh, in the next session. Thank you so much and uh, Jai Hind.